Hello, Tom Lavecki here with the latest edition of the New Theory Podcast. Today, we got a very special guest, uh, Paul Alex. I love this guy's story. He previously worked in law enforcement, uh, turned entrepreneur. He's experienced in sales and digital marketing. He's great at the whole funnel thing. We'll get into that. Um, he found an ATMT, which is an automated service to help clients establish their first ATM locations. ATM is a burgeoning business. You know, the fees associated with that. It's good to be on the right side of that. He helped over 24,000 entrepreneurs uh, nationwide. The guy's a gamer. Love this guy. Uh, Paul Alex, welcome to the New Theory Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Tom. How about yourself, man? Uh, uh, I'm well. So so what type of law enforcement were you in? Ooh, uh, I was a street cop. I was a beat cop. So I was uh, originally from San Francisco, California, the Bay Area. I was in one of the agencies in the Bay Area. Can't name it, you know, conflict of interest and all that jazz. But ultimately, you could say it's, it was one of the most dangerous cities in the United States. So Got it. Got it. Now, now you worked in law enforcement. Obviously, you did that for a reason. Um, I get, I get, um, I get people reach out all the time for this podcast, my other podcast, and it's, it's, you know, hey, I'm a cop. I got guys on the other side of the law that were ex convicts and maybe have restrictions. Yeah. But I just meet a lot of people that are kind of like doing their day to day now, but it's not what they want to do. And yeah, I have some formulas and thoughts on that. Did you kind of start your side hustle while you were a cop, or did you have a clean break? And then start eight AMTM. No, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So ATM together. Um, ATM actually, together. it was from it's. It started with one ATM. So basically, let me give you the the short summary Please. of my backstory for no one uh, for for everyone who's listening to the podcast right now or watching this on YouTube. Yeah. Um, my name is Paul Alex. Basically, I am originally from the Bay Area, guys. Um, nine to fiver. But I've been an entrepreneur for more than a decade. With that being said, I was able to go ahead and actually start a side hustle while I was working as a detective in law enforcement. I'm talking about I was working anywhere between 60 to 100 hours a week, guys. 60 to 100 hours a week. We're talking about straight blood money, okay? Yeah. And the reason why, because if any of you guys are from California right now, anyone listening in California, you know inflation is through the roof, not only through Cali, but throughout the United States. But California is one of the most expensive states to live in. So with that being said, even if you're making a hundred grand, you're still considered low income. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. Right. You know, uh, at the time I was paying rent, my rent was almost four grand. And that was just to be at a reasonable neighborhood. Okay. Because right now, uh, real estate is through the roof everywhere. Right. I mean, you got all the Californians that exited through California. They ended up going to Florida, Texas yeah. and, uh, everywhere else raised up. Uh, rent and the mortgages like crazy throughout the states. So everybody knows what I'm talking about. But with that being said, I started with one ATM on the weekends, spanned it to 30 ATMs, build my tangible business. Ooh, hold, big, on, hold on to your gloves. Yeah. That was some big stuff. I want one ATM. What are the economic economics on it? What is the cost? What is the monthly yeah. flow and margin? And when do I get my money back? No, absolutely. So anybody who's trying to start within the ATM industry, okay, you as an independent deployer, we're going to talk ATM industry jargon right now, okay, you could go ahead and actually buy from straight from the manufacturer, or you could go through an ISO, okay, independent sales organization, just like ATM together, yeah. you could come to us and ultimately just buy yourself an ATM. ATMs roughly run around $2,300 right now. Okay. With inflation, uh, sake of discussion, I put out twenty five hundred, and then what mm -hmm. do I do? Do I knock on the door of a seven high traffic area, seven eleven? What do I do next? Yep. Yeah, basically, just do your research. To me, as an entrepreneur, as me going from the nine to five, starting as no one, I still consider myself no one. I'm I'm no one special. At the end of the day, the only reason why I'm where I'm at right now, running multiple businesses, being able to generate millions of dollars was because I started with a side hustle, which was the ATMs. So self-education is key here, okay? What I would recommend is for anyone right now interested in what I'm talking about as far as ATMs to generate yourself some assets to make your money work for you, then ultimately go on Amazon, buy a book, start self-educating yourself. I hold live trainings inside of my Facebook group, ATM Business for Beginners. Right now, we're currently at 30,000 members oh, within wow. less than two years. 
at the end of the day, man, it all started with a book. I know it sounds cliche. Hold on. But- I, well, I, I, I like, I'm obsessed with your story, but I have ADD. I'm three years old, buddy. I buy a machine for 2300. I buy a machine for 2500. I get I, I, a guy who owns a local motel, puts it in for me. Walk yep. me through, I set the fees at, I'm making this up, 295. It's called $3 per transaction. What do I keep? What do I give the place? What does a bank take? Absolutely. So, so to be a pain, that, I just, I'm just so focused in on the economics. It's all good, brother. So let's talk numbers, okay? So great example you just gave me. You put a ATM at a motel. <clears throat> let's say the motel, it is cash driven, meaning yeah. that let's say right. it's like a Motel 6, they only take cash, right? So at the end of the day, you have that incentive to put that ATM there. That's the number one thing that I would tell anybody that's so research, going to prospect. Research, Correct. I didn't mean to gloss over that. The research is critical. Don't just put it at a 7-Eleven assuming it's going to go because who knows? They might have their payback program. They might have their own cash. So a place that is conducive to cash. Got it. Okay. Absolutely. And that's the first mistake I made in my journey, you know, because at the end of the day, I didn't self-educate myself when I got into the business. Before I was in law enforcement, I was doing six years as a sales manager at corporate America. So at the end of the day, I had a little chip on my shoulder. I thought I knew it all, man. But at the end of the day, you're not going to know everything, right? What you don't know is what you don't know. So, so with that, I uh, go ahead and look for locations that are cash driven. If you walk into any location, Tom, and you say to yourself within 30 seconds, okay, would an ATM place be good here? Would an ATM generate me revenue here? And you have that good gut feeling, then yes, do it. Because at the end of the day, what you're buying is an asset. I, I think of ATMs. I'd also, Paul, I'll, I'll go one step further. I'm like a lazy yeah. guy. I'd piggyback off of people who did the research, find mm-hmm. the local Starbucks. So they did the research on traffic and maybe go around that area to find places for an, for an ATM. Cool. Okay. Walk us through the economics. $3 fee, boom, each. Walk us through the economics. Yeah. So absolutely. So one, I would always tell anybody who is new, don't off the bat offer a percentage of your surcharge to the owner because at the end of the day, God, it might be a convenience. Got it. Okay. Because at the end of the day, it's a convenience. So you're actually helping the merchant, your client, your future client build the traffic by keeping the traffic inside the store, Got it. especially if they have an incentive for the cash. Right? So if you look at credit card machines, merchant services, right? They're charging a percentage. Why do you think some locations don't accept Amex? Cause Amex has some of the highest fees, for their credit cards, right? So at the end of the day, whenever you go to a gas station, let's say in a low income, uh, low income neighborhood, and there's they ask you, hey, you have to pay a minimum of five dollars in product. The reason why they do that is because they're going to lose profitability in their margins Correct. because they're using the credit cards, right? So you go in there, you tell them, look, how much are you paying the merchant services? Let's say they're like, okay, we pay them two percent for every product that we do at the end of the month they end up paying fifteen hundred dollars on fees to that merchant services well you tell that owner you tell that merchant well what if i could save you fifteen hundred dollars if you convert to cash only and i put a nice brand new atm inside of your business there's also there's also a newer trend in the restaurant business that Mm -hmm. uh that i don't know if you ever noticed you go to a place sometimes you're ethical about it sometimes you're not and they charge you a four dollar surcharge yeah. for um, using your credit card. And what they're doing mm-hmm. is they're getting 100% of the fee, right? The customer's paying for the, the MCA, you know, the merchant cash yep. fee. Um, so for me, I'm the kind of guy, like I, I get, I, even if like, even if it's like even, I don't like that kind of stuff. I, it's nickel and diming to me. Um, yeah. So I would go to an ATM and if it works out, I'll take out a hundred bucks and I might, you know, save a dollar. <laughs> not cheap. Yeah. Not principle. Got okay. So now, now we get it. So, so we've been at 2,300. We find the research, right? We're gonna go with we're gonna go with the scenario that the guy is a forward thinker and is like, all right, put in for free, it helps me. Okay, I'm with you. So with three dollars per fee, how much goes to the house? How much do you get? So he's a forward thinker. Let's say you're gonna give him a percentage or whatnot. If oh no, yeah, so we're gonna go with the we're gonna go through two scenarios. One scenario is you know what, Paul, you're a good guy, you're ex cop. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna tell people the machine's down. I'm, I'm and I'm just going to drive people to pay cash. I'm going to put it right here. Don't worry about it. I don't need money from it. I don't need, like, I have a, I have a motel. I do a million dollars a year. I don't need your 400 bucks a month. Just, just, yeah. I'll push people forward. Okay. So I'm with you on that. Okay. Now, now. So, so he, he doesn't get any money. 
do I keep all three dollars or there's a transaction fee or uh, fees associated with my three dollars? So great question. Typically, depending on who you go with, and this is where I tell people to be very careful. A couple of golden nuggets that I will tell you when I first started, there's a processing network. So the ATMs, they actually need the network in order to function. This is what facilitates the transactions between right. the ATM it. and yeah. all that jazz, right? For, for, for all the, the listeners or the viewers that are watching this that are not educated in the ATM industry. So, because trust me, I get asked this number one question all the time. So they're like, what's processing network? So it is the actual network they need in order to function at all. So with that being said, majority of companies out there in the ATM industry, all the OG veterans, they usually charge a percentage for this. And we're talking about they'll charge 30 cents per transaction. Me being new, I'm coming in here like, okay, that sounds good to me because I don't know any better. Yeah. So they're already taking a percentage off top before you even put your ATM inside of the business. And then on top of that, they have you sign an 18 page or service agreement saying that if you leave within three to five years, guess what? You have to pay the tab. That's exactly what happened to me. My first year, I went with a large ATM corporation. I ended up buying six ATMs off of that. That's high because, so if I have a $3 fee and they're going to take 10% of every one, yeah. I need like 3,000 transactions to make my money back and an acceptable profit. And that's a lot of transactions. So that sounds kind of high. So they take a transaction fee. What what are the rate? We'll, we'll, we're gonna. I don't want to give too much away because I want to drive people to your course that are interested. But give us the range. Is it you know zero to thirty cents? What are the ranges on the fees? So the fees is it's typically zero to thirty cents. Got That's it. typically what I've seen. Now, when you say three thousand, okay, that typically you will see that in let's say dispensaries, for example, in California, very okay. popular. They're cash driven right now. By law, it's still federal law that you know marijuana is illegal um, and all that jazz. So the banks they're not messing with uh, dispensaries. But with that being said, any given time, I'm gonna tell you this right now. I have liquor stores that are generating me fifteen hundred dollars net. Wow! And I and I give okay, and I give eight hundred dollars to the owner as his percentage. So he gets about twenty five percent. So with that. Traffic is roughly anywhere between uh, 300 to 500 transactions per month. And this is a 24-7 liquor store that oh, has lottery right. tickets. 1500 comes out of your end, or are you making 2300 and giving them 800 or are you making 50 Cor Correct. Them Correct. Them okay. so, so when you see the value of that, you got to compare that to real estate, okay? What is the upfront cost? Because here's the thing, and I'm going to be very transparent with you, Tom, and, and the listeners here, is that if anybody is to think they're going to get rich off of one ATM, they are out of their mind. Oh, you need economies of scale, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah. Now I get it. I put out 2500 I find a good location. I negotiate the fees. I sign up for your course, get some good stuff out of it. So I'm with, I'm with all of that right now. Um, um, who, who stocks the cash? Does the network stock the cash or do you? Who puts no, it's actually you. It's actually you. So you need operating expenses um to go ahead and actually run your business but the, the great part about this okay and this is where a lot of people get confused right because they're thinking atm wow you can put thousands upon thousands of dollars inside of that atm no starting balance. You, you you actually you actually don't when you first start off i always tell people to start off with one thousand to three thousand dollars their first month okay now they're going to be able to determine after the first month how much money they're truly going to need. These ATMs, they hold up to $20,000 when it's $20 denominations, okay? You can change the denominations. You can change the denominations to 5, 10, low. 20. You get a ping when you're low. Hey, buddy, you're down to 50 bucks. Go, or you just got to guesstimate. Brother, it is 2022. You can run your entire business on your phone, okay? So we got the great applications. We use a Switch Commerce Network, one of the best processing networks out there. So my company, ATM Together, what we do is we don't sell a course, okay? We get, provide the information for free. What we do is we actually provide services. This is, service this is what, this is what the, the game changer was when I came into the industry because ATM Together, I first built my business. The reason why I first built my business is because, one, I'm old school. I'm 34, man. At the end of the day, I wasn't even on social media for six to seven years. 
So I didn't know none of this. I didn't know about the podcast. I didn't know about consulting. I didn't know about digital marketing, social media. What people have right now on their computers is insane to me. They have so much gold, so much value right now to take advantage of for free. And that's exactly what I do. Inside of my Facebook group, the reason why we've been able to scale within a year and a half, Tom, is because simply I provide so much training for free. I give out free mini course. I give free out guys. Yeah, training. You, 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 eat the egg, you eat the eggs, not the chicken. You give a lot of value. They sign up for your course. Now, do I get the machines through you or do you recommend a vendor for, for that? So, one-stop shop. ATMtogether.com is a one-stop shop. Basically, what we do is we set you up with absolutely everything and we automate it for you. So, we basically take the concept of, let's say, if I was back as a detective, 60 to 100 hours a week, what am I going to do? I got kids. I got a wife. I'm not trying to build a business right now, even though that's my dream, right? And for, for a lot of Americans out there right now, for a lot of people that work the nine to five, they just don't have the energy. I get it. That's, that's the reason why I built a side hustle in my late twenties, because at the end of the day, I realized in my late twenties, Hey, this is not sustainable, man. I'm not going to last another 30 plus years doing this. I got lower back problems. Like I'm 80 years old, brother. It's crazy. So at the end of the day, we automate the service for every single one of our clients. We provide you with a brand new ATM. We Wait, show you. Hey, go you got you on, Paul. Sorry. It's all good. So we provide you with a brand new ATM. We help you program it, install it. I have techs in house that actually do live Zoom calls one on one with you. At the end of the day, we provide you with all the networks, the internet, and check this out. This is the game changer right here. And this is why you could say that we were able to scale so fast. We have a call center. So we actually do the prospecting for you. We find your locations nationwide. We have over 1,100 clients nationwide since January of 2021 enrolled into our automation services. Okay. So hold on. So I, I'm interested. I'm going to park 3,000 <laughs> to the side for uh, cash on hand. I'm going to park 2,500 for a machine. What's your rough? Are you a SaaS model? Do I pay you a monthly? Are you a percentage of the revenue? Are you upfront five grand? What's your fee structure roughly? Give ranges. I know it probably varies. No, absolutely. And great question, by the way, Tom. We are upfront cost. Yeah. Upfront cost, transparency. We tell people, look, the amount of time that it takes us to actually invest into building this program to making paying sure that we pay our employees right. So the quality of service does not go down. You're looking at anywhere between a $6,000 to $9,000 investment, depending on the services that you want. Because not everybody is going to need a location for their business. There might be somebody right now listening to this podcast or watching us on YouTube saying, man, I got the perfect location. I just want to learn from Paul and his team, and I want to get an ATM. All they got to do is just come, hop on informational call. My guys are not salesy. But if I give That's you, not, keep it simple. If I give you 9K, is mm -hmm. the machine included or the machine's on top? The machine's included. Oh, shit. Location, location, location's included. Oh, shit. Everything's now, included. Now, right? when I get multiple locations and I use you for that, additional fee or, or is that included? I, I love your questions, brother. So the great part about this, okay? That one up upfront fee, that's one time. Then you guys get everything at cost because you're a member. Because you're trained from us, meaning that there's not gonna you're not gonna be required a lot of work. It's like taking off the training wheels. Yeah. It's like you going through a police academy and graduating and saying, here's your badge and gun, you know? So at the end of the day, you are a fully fledged entrepreneur. Even if you never knew how to run a business, we will teach you. Well, you know what I like about this, Paul? Um is you okay so for those watching and if you're interested we'll put the link below um i don't know if paul heard of this but and if you haven't if you have forgive me but uh people watching listening dummy tax right um i i i can reasonably buy a three hundred fifty thousand dollar ferrari tomorrow get the keys and push it into the hudson river not even start it just put a neutral with the tiptronics and push in the Hudson River and it'll be less than the mistakes I made financially over my business career. Let, let, I would have rather done that than make the mistakes that I made. I'm being serious. So you basically, minimum, there will be dummy tax. 
but you're going to minimize the dummy tax. Basically, 10K gets me started, get some support. If I need some support, I get stuff at cost. I love this. Actually, I did some research on you. It's actually a little bit more robust than I thought. I thought it was going to be a little bit more programmy, like, hey, send up my program. No, you help, you help get shit done. Um, you know, for those watching, though, um, can you lease machines or you got to buy them? So you can always lease machines. And I'm very transparent. I'm going to tell everybody this right now, since we're, we're on the podcast, we're talking, Tom, okay. is there are several companies out there. What makes us different is our brand. OK, I stand behind it. Even as the founder, okay, I still, what I tell people is I'm in the trenches, man. I will still talk to my clients. You hit me up on Facebook. You hit me up on uh, IG. You, I even give out my, my phone number. There are clients that fly into San Diego where I'm stationed at right now and say, hey, Paul, I'm in town. Can you grab some lunch? I just want, I just want to talk to you real quick. Yeah, let's do it. This is, this is my schedule. Book, book a, you know, a time and let, let, let's rock. I'll meet you over there. That's just that's just the way I roll. It's good business. It's old school. What um when do you? I I know it's not easy to answer because it matters by market. It matters by and there's so many variables. But when do you start to hit economies of scale? Is it three units, five units, ten? Like when do you really start seeing it sink to the bottom line? I have clients. I'm gonna give you a great example. I have one client, truck driver, 23 years old, brand new. Uh, a baby born girl last year started with us. Uh, he's 13 months into the business, has five locations that we found him. Okay, in Texas. Kid is making $4,300 in residual passive income from his business. That's separate from wow. what he's doing as a truck driver. The kid for his birthday this year bought a Hellcat charger. And I was, I, I was laughing because I was like, to be honest, man, if I was 23, I'd probably do the same thing. You know, we all make our mistakes. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a cars guy. And I tell him, hey, man, I, it's your money. I would have suggested to do that. I would say, I don't suggest to actually scale your business because you, you're, you're making a good amount now. Yeah. And, and then I have other clients that have two, three locations and they're netting a thousand each location. And then I have other clients the average our clients are making within our company is anywhere between two hundred to a thousand dollars. Yeah, okay? I would say, I would on say average. Yeah, I would say it's a blocking and tackling game. Mm -hmm. Like we have one machine expect to make two three hundred. The next one yeah. five hundred. Now, now, when do you know how much time do you give an unprofitable location? Like, let's say it's you give three months, six months. Like, let's say you put a machine in and it's either underwater or or making only a hundred, a few hundred bucks, so it's not worth it. How much time do you give for an unprofitable location typically? Great question. Three to five months. So typically three months is the minimum because all the locations that we provide. Okay. And even if somebody's out there prospecting by themselves and they just found their own location, they're excited about it. Give it at least three months because if it's a new location, people still need to figure out that there's an actual ATM and then also communicating and helping the business owner, help them promote it. Social media is huge right now. It's giving small business owner like myself, like all my clients, like you, like a voice. So you're exposed to thousands, millions of people out there. So use it, guys. Use your social media platform to expand your business. It's the best opportunity you will ever have in life. I love it. Okay, so we have a um, for I have another podcast. I'm going to talk to you about it afterwards. But for this sure. podcast, it's a little bit more audio than video. So some people sure. are driving or they're working out. So I'm going to put a link below on the iTunes and the YouTube. But do me a favor. Can you drop? Uh, can you share? How to find you like ASA people? Yeah, absolutely. Fastest, easiest way, IG, Instagram, guys, the Paul Alex. Okay. And then check out the main company website, www.atmtogether.com. Atmtogether.com, guys. Love it. I call it ATMT, but ATM Together sounds even better. <laughs> check it out. Uh, Paul, I high expectations. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to put the link below. I'm going to promote this for you. I might even look into it myself and uh, sure. I appreciate you being on the new theory podcast, brother. Thanks brother.